Hi, and welcome back to the channel where I'm going to cover the Sorcerer's Clockwork Soul class specialization from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, providing a brief description of the subclass, as well as explain and set up the various features gained. A Sorcerer of the Clockwork Soul class is able to make use of the same energy that powers many clockwork-related machinations that call the Mechanist Realm home, or, if you're playing in a custom world, some other similar realm. This energy has been suffused into your character's lineage at some point throughout their ancestral line, or even directly into your own character, depending on what you choose for a background. However that power emerged, it's there and available for use by your character through the various features of magic that has been and will be granted to your character through this class. Unlike other classes, however, the Sorcerer selects their class specialization at level 1, as it's the class specialization that dictates how your character has the power that they wield. As a result, I'm going to quickly set up a level 1 Sorcerer, and when I get to the class selection, I will show you how the subclass selection works through the character wizard. So give me a moment, and I will be right back. I'm about ready to select the Sorcerer class, and as soon as I do that, it's going to pop open our class specialization down here at the bottom. And in this case, I want Clockwork Soul. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of this particular character buildout, and I will be right back to cover the first feature. The first feature your character will receive is called Clockwork Magic and it grants your character new spells that don't take up any of your existing known spell capabilities. These spells can be replaced, however, but if you're choosing to replace one of them, they must be from the Abjuration or Transmutation spell tables of the Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard spell lists. If you're unsure on how to find that, you will need to ensure that your Spells button here is available on your right side of your screen. You can do so by selecting the Settings, then the Sidebar button here, and toggle the State of the Spells button here. Once your spell selection is available, you can go ahead and select your quote-unquote class that you're looking for for the actual spell list and then choose the level that you wish to select from. Although you don't actually get level 6, you get 1 through 5 essentially. Let's choose a level 1. And this will allow you to choose one of those spells from this list, but once again, you got to make sure that it's of the abjuration or transmutation here. So in this case, transmutation would apply. Whenever you have chosen a spell from the Warlock or Wizard spell tables, it will become a Sorcerer spell for the intensive purposes of your ability to cast it. And thus, we we'll want to ensure when we add a group specific to the Clockwork Magic spells, that we set up the appropriate stats so that it will do so. Initially, your character is going to gain the Alarm and Protection from Evil and Good spells, but at levels 3, 5, 7, and 9, your character will gain two additional spells at each of those levels. But this isn't the only thing your character gains from this feature. You also gain a means to describe what people see when you're casting your spells from this particular school. Because based on the realm that you have chosen, different visual effects can start occurring as your character is casting that spell. And the bottom of the information sheet has a table that provides several examples that you can choose to make use of. Or you can go ahead and create your own. It's entirely up to you. However, let's go ahead and set up the appropriate power group for this particular group of spells. The first thing I'm going to want to do is drag the alarm spell and drop it into place. I'm then going to want to create a new group called Clockwork Magic. And I'm going to pretense this with the keyword spells on the end. And the reason for that is I want to differentiate our features list, if you will, or our features group from our spell group. The next thing I'm going to want to do is modify the spell group. By default, when you do this, it's going to create an abilities group. We want that to be a spell group. So you just change the icon there. You click on it with your left mouse button so that it changes from the sword to the spell book. You're also going to want to set up oops, charisma as your base stat, and these two will automatically inherit this ability. And you do not need to set prepared. This actually changes the behavior of how this works. And in this particular case, we don't want to set that. With this group now set up, all I want to do is drag in the protection from evil and good spell so that it drops it into place, and it will automatically apply it to this same group. Spells do that. Features don't necessarily do that unless they're already part of the same group. Also at level 1, your character is going to gain the Restore Balance feature, giving your character a means to counterbalance any advantage or disadvantage roll that a creature is about to make. And they, that creature has to be within 60 feet of your character and is visible to your character. This will make use of a reaction, so you won't be able to do this more than a single time per turn. 
And there's also a limited number of uses that come into play as well that is equal to your character's proficiency bonus before your character's going to need to complete a long rest in order to be able to reuse this feature again. But because this is utilizing a reaction, and unlike setting up a ready action, you do not need to tell the DM at the beginning of your turn, hey, if this condition happens, I'm going to use Restore Balance. You don't need to do that. The feature is already setting up that pretext for you. All you have to do is tell the DM that you're utilizing Restore Balance at the time you actually want to use it throughout that particular turn. Now, the way this Restore Balance feature is going to work once we've added it to your character's action sheet is that when you see a character is going to be rolling with advantage, let's say that you have an orc that's about to attack somebody with an advantage roll, you can use this Restore Balance feature to cancel the advantage on that roll. And there will be a number of things that you will need to be aware of. For example, specific conditions that might provide advantage to an attacker. Uh, blindness, for example, pretty much everybody gets advantage on that particular target who is blind. Whereas someone who is prone, only melee attackers will be able to gain access to advantage on that particular attack roll. But at the time that you choose to take this particular class specialization, you should tell the dungeon master, hey, any time you are going to be rolling with advantage, please let me know because I want to make the decision as to whether I utilize Restore Balance or not. And then as long as the conditions align, you'll be able to make use of that. The same thing can happen to party members if you wish to choose to cancel out a disadvantage roll on a particular creature who happens to be a party member because they are suffering from a condition, you will be able to do so. So you can cancel out that disadvantage roll for them, thus making sure that they don't have to take the lowest of two rolls. Now, it doesn't necessarily guarantee they're going to roll good, but you're at least improving their odds. However, this does have a usage thing that we need to track. So I'm going to drop this into place and I'm going to create a group called Clockwork Soul. I am then going to set it up for the total number of proficiency uses that we have. So in this particular case, our proficiency bonus is used of plus two. So that means we can use this particular feature twice before we will have to complete a long rest to be able to gain access to it again. We will also need to ensure that at various levels, we increase the number of utilizations that we have of this particular feature. At level three and at level five, we will have a couple of things we need to do. And I've already leveled up this character because there's nothing else that happens up until level 3 and level 5 in relation to any new features or things that you gain in this particular class specialization. The first is that we need to take care of adding in our level 3 and level 5 spells. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Aid and drop it into the Clockwork Magic Spells group, and it will automatically create a linked group of second level. I'm then going to drop in Lesser Restoration, and it doesn't matter where in these two groups you drop it, it will automatically go into the right group. Oops, I've already added that spell. I'm then going to drag in Dispel Magic and Protection from Energy. And that takes care of all of the groups that we are now going to have in association to our Clockwork Magic spells. The next thing we're going to want to do is ensure that we increase the usage for Restore Balance, because at level 5, our proficiency bonus goes from plus 2 to plus 3. So you're going to want to adjust that from two daily uses to three daily uses. At Sorcerer level six, your character will gain the Bastion of Law feature, allowing your character to create a warding shield that is made up of D8s based on the number of sorcery points your character chose to use during this action. I do cover how sorcery points work in the Sorcerer base class video. However, I will be making an adjustment on what I've done there so that I can optimize the utilization of that particular capability here with the particular subclass. Your character can make use of between one to five sorcery points, and for each point spent, a D8 is added to the warding shield for a maximum of five warding dice. The ward can be placed on your character or on another creature or character who is within 30 feet of where your character is standing and is visible to your character, and it will remain in place until your character completes a long rest or decides to cast another ward. When attacked, the warded creature or character will be able to expend one or more of those D8 wards by rolling the D8 dice and subtracting the total value from the incoming damage. Once all of the D8 die are used up, the ward will then collapse. For example, let's say your character cast the ward on themselves and spent 5 sorcery points to create the ward. This means they will have a total of 5 D8 dice they can spend to deflect incoming damage. Let's say the first attack hits that shield and deals 15 points of damage. You can choose not to use the ward, 
then if you do so, that damage will go completely against your character's hit points. However, let's say you choose to use two dice, reducing the remaining pool to three ward dice. And with those dice, let's say that you rolled a total of 13. This 13 is subtracted from the 15 points of incoming damage, and thus reduces the total amount of damage to two points. However, it's not possible to heal your character if you happen to exceed the amount of damage that was incoming by a couple of points. Those points don't go against your character for healing. So we're going to need to ensure we set up a feature to simply cancel out all of the incoming damage if the amount rolled exceeds that of the incoming damage. So the first thing we are going to want to do is to set up our Bastion of Law feature. And we're going to create a new group called Sorcery Points. And I'm going to drop that into place. I'm then going to modify this group to take into account a couple of things. First off, it stays as an ability group. We also want to update it so it utilizes our charisma. And we also want to make it equal to the number of sorcery points that our character has, which at level six is going to be six sorcery points. And that's because you don't gain sorcery points until you get to level two. So you start off with two when you acquire that feature. And then from that point on, you gained one additional point. Now what we can see is that we have an X number of points here that represent our total number of sorcery points. If we choose, for example, to only use one sorcery die, then we would only gain one ward when we actually went through and set that up. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky because you're going to want to take advantage of Fantasy Grounds' automation in this case. You're not going to want to do this adjustment after the fact because it can get a little bit tiresome and cumbersome for the Dungeon Master. So we're going to want to add up to five effects on this particular feature, and they're going to be effects. And I'm going to show you the first one as an example. This feature is going to look like this. It's going to be called Bastion of Law DMG minus 1d8. And the reason why I've said minus 1d8 is because I'm setting this up initially for someone who's only going to use one of the dice when the damage is incoming. It's also going to expire on the next roll. Now I'm also going to want to ensure that I have the case where two dice, three dice, four dice, and five dice are used as part of this selection. Because this isn't something that you can just simply pick up and right click to add an additional dice to. You actually have to have the dice preset, if you will, when it comes to something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and create four more effects. And once these effects are set up, I'm going to go ahead and populate the information here. But instead, I'm going to make sure that I set it up as two and it expires on next roll. This one will be three. And it expires on the next roll. This one will be four. And it's going to expire on the next roll. And then finally, five. This is going to only come into play if you've granted someone five warding points. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and show how this is actually going to work. Now, regardless of who you give this shield to, the way you're going to behave and operate with this particular feature is going to be the same. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the sorcerer to be the active player. And I'm going to go ahead and simply add this ward to our own character, which means I need a marker to indicate that I need that ward there. So I'm going to go ahead and create a simple warding effect or indicator effect. And this is really just to remind you who has the ward. So I'm going to add Bastion of, war Bastion of Law to my character. Now, I could set up something where this particular damage only comes into play when a particular target is attacking the person who has Bastion of Law. For simplicity's sake, I'm just simply going to do it this way. Now let's say that this vampire, during their turn, is going to attack our sorcerer. So I'm going to move the turn to the vampire. Now our vampire is already targeting us. I'm going to go ahead and have the vampire attack. Now in this particular case, it's a hit. Me as a character, I'm going to be slightly worried as to how many points of damage this particular vampire is going to do. And let's say that I used all five of my wards so that I have the ability to make use of this particular value. 
before the vampire rolls their damage, what you're going to want to do is apply the effect that is going to be equal to the number of dice you want to actually expend as part of the counter to this attack coming from the vampire. Now, in this particular case, so that I have some additional examples I can make use of, I'm only going to drop the 1d8 effect here. The vampire is then going to roll their damage. And you will see that two dice get rolled. The first is going to be their damage dice. The second is going to be your counter dice. This minus one is going to drop the total amount of damage by one point. Now, if I'd rolled a six, then it would drop this down to zero because I would have equaled six total points of damage, subtracted six, bringing this down to zero. Now, what I'm going to do is for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to temporarily add minus five to this for this particular attack roll. And I'm going to reroll that damage. You will see that there are a number of dice that come into play. And you will also see that the total amount of damage that we received was zero. And that should be obvious because we subtracted quite a bit of total, dice total, if you will, from that overall damage. This particular attack can only do 1d8 points of damage plus whatever their modifier is. So we used in excess in relation to what that vampire can actually do for damage. But it goes to show that you will simply cancel out the damage. You won't heal your own character because the number of wounds that are there are still there. I still have five wounds. The tricky bit is simply going to be tracking how many points remain for that ward. Now, if, let's say, you've assigned the ward to, say, the ape here, then that ape is going to have to indicate to you how many warding dice they're going to choose. Let's say they chose two then what you would do is you would still drag, and it would still be you that does this, the effect onto the attacker. So let's again, let's say the vampire. And when that vampire attacks, does the damage, I should say, to the ape, then this ability will cancel out whatever amount of damage that ape is going to receive. But then the ape only has three remaining points. So you yourself are going to have to track how many are currently out there. The ape isn't necessarily going to want to do that. Neither is the player who's controlling another character. They might. But you should also keep track. How you do that is entirely up to you. It could be just a piece of paper on your desk. It could be utilizing a notes here, or you could indicate in a value. Okay, so I cast out uh, five or four rather. So I have four remaining on that particular person who has the Bastion of Law effect. Once this gets down to zero, then you just get rid of it. It's entirely up to you as to how you track it. At levels 7 and 9, you're going to want to deal with your Clockwork Magic spells. And I've already leveled our character up to 9 so that I can deal with both of these in one shot. Because there's nothing else that happens in relation to this particular class specialization between that. So I'm going to go ahead and expand out one of these Clockwork Magic spells groups. Doesn't matter which one. And then I'm just simply going to drag and drop our new spells onto the action sheet within that group, and that's going to automatically create level 4 and level 5 groups for us. At levels 9 and 13, we are going to want to make an adjustment to the number of uses for Restore Balance, because at level 9, your proficiency bonus goes from 3 to 4, and at level 13, your proficiency bonus goes from 4 to 5. So all you have to do in each of those particular cases is, uh, where is, there it is, adjust the usage of restore balance initially to 4 and then to 5 when you hit to 13. At sorcerer level 14, your character is going to gain access to the trance of order feature, giving your character a means to prevent any attack roll that is against your character being made with advantage rolls, as well as ensuring any attack roll, ability check, or saving throw that rolls a 9 or lower on a d20 die is at minimum a 10 as a bonus action. The effect will remain active for one minute or 10 rounds if you're in combat and will continue to protect your character for the entire time. So we don't need to worry about an on next roll expiration. But it does have a usage limitation in that it can be used once before your character will be required to complete a long rest or you can choose to go ahead and expend five sorcery points to be able to use it again after you've essentially used quote unquote your free use. Now, to clear something up, at level 14, you will have 14 sorcery points. So I'm going to go ahead and add 14 sorcery points to our particular character and clean out the rest of these. Trans of Order is going to need to be used in both the sorcery point conditions as well as our base feature. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drag it into here first. It's not going to automatically drop into there, but I do need to copy and paste the group. I now need to set up a usage limitation of one daily use, and we'll worry about the effects in a moment. The next thing you're going to want to do is do the same thing, add this particular transfer order to our class sheet, but instead of copying in uh, Clockwork Soul here, you want to copy in Sorcery Points. And that will automatically set it up so that we can now make use of Sorcery Points in relation to making use of this particular feature. Now, unfortunately, Fantasy Grounds doesn't really have the means to deal with automatically detecting, if you will, whether a d20 roll has lowered a 9 or lower, and round that up to 10 automatically. Unfortunately, it means is that you're going to have to keep an eye on what your d20 actually rolled during an attack roll. So let's say, for example, oops, you choose to make an attack roll with your dagger or your club. Now, I don't have anything targeted right now, but I rolled a 19. Let's see if I can get something lower. So in this particular case, my character rolled a 6. This adjustment applies to the dice roll, not to the total. So that means that 6 plus 5 is 11. In this particular case, you automatically get the ability to add 4 more points to this attack roll. Because at minimum, your character would have a minimum roll of 10. That means that this particular attack was actually a 15, not an 11. So that's how that particular capability of this feature works. In relation to the advantage, however, what you will want to do is remind the Dungeon Master that while this particular trance of order effect is in place, if you will, no attack against your character can be done so with advantage. The other capability is that you can simply apply disadvantage if you know there's an attack coming in that might have advantage, say your character's prone, for example. You can automatically activate this feature, apply the disadvantage effect, and it will automatically cancel out the advantage effect. What I am going to do, however, is create a tracking effect. And what I mean by that is the duration. That's all we really want to track here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new effect initially in our Clockwork Soul version of this particular feature. And I'm going to call it Trance of Order. Copy that so that I can use that again. And set it up so that it runs on one minute or expires for after one minute, and it's on your character. I will then do the same thing for the Sorcery Point version of this particular effect or feature. One minute and self. Oops. There we go. Now let's go and show how this is actually going to work. Now because this is a bonus action, it means it has to be activated on your action. So that means that when you decide to activate this particular feature, you simply click that and add that to your character. And it's going to last for 10 rounds. While this is on your character, you can take these particular effects into account. So let's say that your attack roll has come into play, I'm going to go ahead and make my attack roll. That's too high in this particular example. I want something a little lower. There we go. Once again, we had a 6, which means I can automatically add 4 to that attack roll. And it applies to ability checks as well as to saving throws. So any of those combinations of dice that you have to roll. In relation to the incoming attacks, this isn't going to apply on your turn. That's going to apply, let's say, when the vampire has their turn or when the mind flayer has their turn. Anytime they attack you, if they happen to have advantage against your character at the time that particular attack, attack comes into place, remind the Dungeon Master they don't have that advantage because of this particular feature, because it's active. After 10 rounds, when this feature goes away, then they will regain their ability to attack you with advantage if that effect or capability or prone state or whatever is still in place to give them that advantage. At Sorcerer level 17, our character is going to gain the means to make use of Restore Balance one additional time because our proficiency bonus is increased plus, from plus 5 to plus 6. So I'm going to, oops, I was already there. There we go. So I'm going to increase this from 5 to 6 in relation to this particular feature. And that's the final time that we have to adjust Restore Balance. We don't get any additional adjustments. The final feature your character is going to gain is called Clockwork Cavalcade, and this happens at Sorcerer level 18. 
and it's going to allow you to call forth the spirits of the clockwork worlds, which can range from a number of different constructs. However, the spirits will spawn in a 30-foot cube around your particular character and are invulnerable to all damage and are intangible, meaning they can't be destroyed or targeted. But they can provide your character up to three effects that come into play. The first effect is that all creatures within that cube can receive healing from a pool of a total of 100 hit points. That means that you can grant, for example, 20 hit points of healing to up to 5 creatures within that space, or 10 hit points of healing up to 10 creatures, as long as the total does not exceed the total of 100 hit points. The next effect is going to automatically and completely repair any objects that are within that particular cube. So if a dresser has been damaged, it will be immediately repaired. If a door has been damaged, it will be immediately repaired. If there is a construct that is there, it will be immediately repaired. And the last effect will automatically cancel out the effects of any level 6 or lower spell on any given objects or creatures of your choice. So if you are looking to cancel a light spell, for example, on 100 ball bearings that are all within that particular space of the cube, then all 100 would have that capability cancelled. That spell would automatically drop on all 100 of those ball bearings. Now, I'm not sure why 100 ball bearings would contain a light spell, but I was simply trying to showcase that there really isn't a limit to how many spells can get cancelled. You just have to select them as your targeted objects or creatures in order to have those effects cancelled. Now, your character will essentially gain one free use of this feature before they will need to complete a long rest in order to regain that free use again. However, you can choose to expend seven sorcery points to be able to use this feature again. So it gives you a couple of chances in order to be able to use this feature without having to worry about when and if you should actually use this. Because of that, we're going to want to do the exact same thing we did with Trance of Order. We're going to want to make sure that it gets added to our Clockwork Soul group and set up a usage limitation there. In this particular case, it's going to be one daily use. And we're also going to want to do it for our sorcery points. And it will automatically come into play. Now, unfortunately, there really isn't an easy way to deal with the divvying out of these 100 hit points. You're going to have to explain to the dungeon master, and it's the easiest way to do it, how many hit points you're going to give to each creature, and then they will go and simply make the adjustments as required. And the DM's also going to have to be involved when it comes to repairing objects as well as cancelling out any of the effects on creatures and objects simply because chances are you're not going to be able to control it. And really, that's all we can do when it comes to Clockwork Cavalcade. And it seems like this particular subclass can be a very interesting one to play as it kind of feels like a mechanized version of an Artificer if the Artificer class had not been introduced at the same time. The various features seem to balance well to be able to provide decent support to a good-sized party, and while most of the features seem a little utilitarian, they can pack quite a wallop, especially with the ability to simply, simply cancel out some very powerful level 6 spell effects, and could potentially be used to nullify many hard-to-deal-with effects as a result, such as petrification, blindness, or even deafness. However, this does bring us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.